Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mom and Pop Quilt Shop and we're very happy to see you here today. Today we're working on a half circle Dresden sunshine bag. And that's what I'm calling it because, you know, I don't know. I think it looks nice and it suits it. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to put two kind of whole Dresdens together. Not necessarily together, 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 but as in one half and another half. Okay, so you can see here how this bag I made, it, I did two strips of 10 inches of the raindrop fabric and then two strips of 10 inches of the pink fabric. And then I have some flex foam one-sided fusible uh, stabilizer to obviously make the bag stand up and of course for the bottom itself okay so let's 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 get our little uh, process going here and we'll show you how we get there first first we need our 10 inch Dresden a plate layer cake ruler you can whether you want to use a layer cake you can doesn't really matter you're gonna need 44 to 48 pieces of fabric depending on maybe your Dresden ruler is not the right angle so you know just to give yourself allow enough to get at least half of a, a sun ray sort of thing or um, uh, sun sunset or sunflower or something like that it should definitely give you a little bit more than the half there having 11 pieces okay so that's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven all right so if you use the, and you'll need this times four. So this will be one side, then you'll need another side, and then you'll need another side and another side. So hence the 44, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off the matching one to this one right here. So we're gonna take our Dresden ruler and we have our strip of 10 inch fabric and we're just gonna use up the last little bits of it here to cut a wedge. So you can see how I use the ruler, okay? And I try to, um, if at all, all possible, try to not cross over as you try to use some of these rulers. If you have to, then go around and flip it the other way and use it, you know, the opposite direction, right? So whatever makes it more comfortable for you so you're not crossing over yourself, okay? So just hold it down, steady, and then cut up, okay? And then you just flip the ruler around, especially if it's, even if it's a, a pattern, you can flip and flop it as much as you like. Uh, with the raindrops, it seemed to turn out uh, the way I, I wanted it to. I don't know. I thought it looked really nice. So there we go. That's easy enough to make your little Dresden um, uh, wedges just like that. And, of course, you're not sewing the tops of them together. You're just going to leave them flat. You're going to sew them together to make your little sun ray. Okay. So let's finish off what we need to here. I think we only needed two and two. So two more burgundy and blues and two more burgundy blues. So four. Okay. And of course, uh, whatever color you want to leave as your outside, you're going to have two. So you have a little bit more blue than you would the burgundy. I did both. I have one with a little bit more burgundy and one with a little bit more blue. Okay. So we're just going to sew down here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Very easy, putting those two little wedges together. And we'll line up the second one as well. And making it so it's burgundy and blue, not blue and burgundy. Uh, it does make a difference when you go to lay it out. So make sure you... Uh, of course, you can use many colors. You can use 12 different colors. You can do 11 different colors. Sorry. Um, you can do whatever you like. 44 different colors. That would be an awesome bag for sure. For sure. Bust your stash, make yourself a beautiful spring little tote. Grab some things from the little market and bring it on home. And your cute little tote. Okay, once we get these little four together, oops, hold on. I don't think I had it lined up. I didn't, look at, look how shy that was. All right, where's our seam, seam ripper? Seam ripper, seam ripper, you're my best friend. All right, let's rip that out to a little bit past so we know we actually had some fabric we were stitching to. Oh, should have lined it up, but I didn't. Okay, here we go. 
try try better this time. Oh 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 oh! No, Nomi wants to, or Janie wants to get all persnickety. Okay, hold on. wrapping around anywhere it doesn't need to be all right let's finish that off make sure those two edges are lined up together oh I'm sorry okay now that those four are added we're just going to add it to our other little stack of rays here beautiful of sunshine Threads. Okay, so that should be our 11, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, let's press these four since we just added them so they're nice and flat like this one here. And then I'm going to show you how I go and measure out how much we're going to, uh, actually once we pin them together, how much we're going to need uh, for the uh, circle or half circle cut of the foam. Okay, so let's just press this real quick here. You do want to press as much as you can with this project just to keep things nice and straight and flat. Okay. And you don't need any special tools except for the Dresden ruler. See, now we're going to add these two on top of each other and make sure that our seams are aligned where the burgundy and burgundy meet. The same with the where the blue and the blue meet. Okay. So we're just going to pop a pin in there. Okay. Do do. And then we're going to sew along. Okay. We do want to make sure they're aligned because it is going to affect from the inside of the bag to the outside of the bag and how it looks. So we just want we want to make sure we're doing the best we can by pinning that up and making it look as pretty as possible. Okay, so now we're just going to sew a nice quarter inch seam allowance all the way down around here. And then we're going to take and clip a few edges here, or you can use your pinking shears, which is this um, serrated uh, little um, X, like zigzag sort of thing, and which helps allow for fabric to be able to stretch around curves. So, okay. Oh, oops. Oh, I forgot one step. Uh oh, hold on. Mm, did I draw it out here? Which is the circle for the inside. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot that one. Let's go back. Let's go back a step here. My mistake. Okay, circle for the inside. Now I went and found just a nice little easy tool that I had in my kitchen, which was the uh, funnel that goes for when you're canning. And it was uh, literally the perfect size to be able to come and give it maybe about two thirds of the cup and give that a bit of a trace. And then I cut that out just by, you know, a, a general like little um, cut with the rotary cutter and gave it just a little bit of room all the way around. Okay, move that up to the side. And then what I did is I took this underneath the machine, sewed all the way around like a little bit of an edge, and then I popped that over the center just like that. Okay, so let's, let's try and get that done. Sorry, I skipped that step, didn't mean to. Okay. And of course you can use complementary thread or you can use a, a, a coordinating thread. I've got white going on here, just I'm gonna stick with that. Okay. And you just kind of want to fold over a quarter of an inch. Just make your way around the corner. Yes, you're going to have little pleats, but that's how it is. You're going to work your way around a corner. But you want to kind of keep it as, as equal as to that quarter inch. Quarter inch to, you know, five eighths all the way around. Okay. 
Give it a nice curve. You can hand stitch this as well to give it a nice base before you went and stitched it down onto the um, half circle. That's another way to do it. Okay. Now you have that little half circle moon there. You want to place it right where it belongs on here, where it's kind of covering everything, but you still have excess underneath of it. So we'll just pin that there. And then when I sew it around the second time around, I tried to stay to the stitch line that I already had. So I wasn't adding any more uh, visual contrast to the, the project. I was just uh, stitching right on the line itself. Okay, so hold on, let me do that. And then I don't necessarily have to have the other one done to show you what I need to do next. So, okay, so there we go. It's just stitching right on the, the previous line that I just made to make that curvature of the fabric with its raw edges underneath. Okay, and I'm trying my best to stay on the previous stitch lines. Doesn't always work, that's okay. Always use buttons to cover up your boo-boos. <laughs> Okay, so there's half, there's half a section right there. Okay. You don't necessarily have to trim the back unless that burgundy is going to shine through your uh, circle part here, okay? <coughs> Sorry, tickle. All right, now, say, say we've done the circle on this one, okay? We're going to line these up, and we're going to sew all the way around, and do some clipping. So it fits nice and to get nice together, okay? Then with that turned in edge, once we turn this right side out, this turned edge is going to be kind of our guideline on what we cut out of the foam, okay? Okay, here, let's just move that off here and I'll show you what I mean. Do do, pop you over here. Okay, here's already one with, with the foam already, okay, and I have stitched it down. But what you would want to do is you would take that half circle and you would lay it out on your foam as, as optimal as you can. Scoot it over as much as you can so you're not wasting any of the foam as possible. Do your trace all the way around because it's your folded edge in, and then that should literally fit right inside your little... Um, ray pocket pretty much okay and then you're going to use a chunk of section left over to get you your bottom piece okay do 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 where did I do with that one here we go okay get you your bottom piece and then that's when I used another handy dandy tool in the quilt shop <laughs> packing tape <laughs> and I just put a little uh, curvature on one side and a curvature on the other and do a straight line in between and gave it approximately between eight to nine inches to be able to go between this halfway point here and the outside edge being curved in a bag form, okay? So what I'll do is I will cut this out on its line, okay? Do the scissors. Use your rotary cutter too if you like, okay? So that's how I did that formation for the bottom of the bag. Now you can have a square bag, you can have more of an oval shaped bag. Um, this, this was a good one to do for this project, this sort of size, because it allowed for a little bit of curvature around each end. It's like a, a racetrack sort of thing, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to lay that on either two pieces of burgundy or two pieces of blue or one of each, depending on what you want on the inside and what you want on the outside. And then I went and tried to give, give it uh, about a quarter of an inch, generous quarter of an inch all the way around, okay? All the way around. And that was pretty much my cut line. Okay. There, that was there. And then on the inside, it came right up next to the foam. And then that was going to be my, just on the other side of it, was going to be my sew line. Because I really want this little centerpiece to fit nice and snug. Okay, oops. So you have two little lines, one for your inner and one for your outer. Okay, let's just kind of do this as a rough cut here. And we're going to sew along that inner line. Okay. Oops. Sorry. We'll just 
go, and you're gonna give yourself a space because you wanna be able to squish this and put it in, okay? So give yourself a little bit, of, especially on the straightaway, a, bit of, a, a couple inches at least. Do a little back stitch. Just kind of following a little bit on the outside of that line. Sorry. Cutting fluffs makes my nose itchy. All right, now I think we have about two, two and a half inch uh, space there. Do a little back stitch, okay. Pull our little pins out. Do some trimming all the way around. Follow that line that we had originally had started. Being generous, about a quarter of an inch past the foam. Okay, so we're just cutting that. I always tend to leave a little bit more extra fabric when it comes to where the closure is, just in case you have to turn something in. Okay, all right, so there we go. Now, on those curves, you wanna do a little relief cutting, little snips, okay just to make sure things are gonna sit a little bit better when you go to turn it right side out and then put that in, okay? So let's flatten it out, flatten it out. Okay, and then of course give this a little fold and tuck it in there. It's the bottom of your bag. Whether you make it square, you make it rectangular, you make it oval, you do the like the little racetrack shape that I've done here, whatever uh, makes it convenient for you. And of course, you can line your sides up to your bag to figure out what sort of uh, big space you like, right? Because uh, this is where you can easily form the panels of sun uh, around whatever it is you want to make. I mean, that's that's the joy of it, right? Whatever size you want to make, make a heart. A circle. Okay, so now that all is wiggly diggly dinner. <laughs> okay, once once it gets moved to the bottom, it just uh, of course because I'm 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 fighting with it. Okay, and then once uh, I get the binding on the bottom, I'll show you here. You just kind of place it and you'll pin it, and it looks really good. All right, so let's show you how to do the binding. Okay. So you cut a two inch strip of your, whatever your most favorite fabric of your uh, bag here. You're gonna fold it over at least a quarter of an inch on itself. Put the raw sides together. You could of course uh, press it if you like. And then you're gonna line it up right next to where it meets, right here, your other little um, project. Okay, here, your back, oh, that's not the right one. Did I, I must have grabbed the wrong one. Where's the other one? Uh, whoops. This one? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, that's not it. <laughs> Fabric all over me. Okay, try this again, shall we? Minus that. Okay, fold that in. And I found two inches was just enough to get you around what you needed, in, around the fabric and the foam. Okay, so pin up on one side. Okay, and then make sure your raw edges are together. Sorry, I know it's hard to see when I put it right in front of me to fiddle with. Okay, and then you're gonna cut yourself a good, you know, two or three inches or inch past or whatever it is for the other side, okay? And you'll be able to tuck that in when you get there, okay? So let's just sew right down here and we'll do it as just as if we were binding. We'll do it the flip and then stitch, okay? I'm just trying to get things lined up better. I just kind of, kind of hurried it there, but I really would like it to look good. Okay. All right. A little back stitch. Okay. I'm trying to keep right quarter of an inch right to the edge of the um, foam. Okay, the bag foam. And of course, you got your both fabrics on either side of it. Okay. 
Of course, you could use a contrasting binding at this point in time. You could totally would pop around the shape of the quilt, the bottom of the, sorry, the shape of the bag. So used to saying quilt. And then of course, once you get before you get to the other end, you want to make sure you're tucking in that raw edge in equal portion, like maybe a little bit more than what you need. So you can always trip off, trim off some if you feel like it's you know you got you know five inches up in there. All right, so let's do a little bit of trim. We'll tuck it up. Okay. Want to make sure just in line with the edge of that the bag, the foam of the bag. Okay. Perfect. There we go. And then you're going to go and you're going to take it from that right there, flip it, and sew it on down nice and snug. And that's how it's going to seal up your one of your half suns of your bag, okay? So that's going to do that right there. So hold on, let me grab the... Mm -hmm. oh, no, I got here, I guess. I can grab this one right now, okay? So... Once you get to that stage, you're going to line up your bottom part, that little part that you made right there, this part right here, and you're going to have find the half, and you're going to have find the half of your sun, and the half of your sun there, and of course the half of where this lies, sorry, here, half here and half there, and you're going to pin those, okay? And you're going to pin them so it goes all the way around so it gets the right shape that you're looking for. And then you come in and you hand stitch it. You just hand stitch it all closed. You get your little bit of uh, bottom, a little bit of your side, and a little bit of your side. And of course, some places you're only just going to have one side right here at the very ends. But in the most part of overlapping, you're going to have two. Now, you can pin the handles on here. Uh, sorry, you can sew handles on here. You can put buttons, buttons and handles, leather handles, straps, whatever you would like. You can also fold these outer edges over to give it a whole different style of a bag. You can tack with buttons or something on the side, attach your handles, thicker handles, smaller handles, whatever you would like. You customize it, make it your own, you know, add buttons all the way up around the side here or just do something different. I mean, the, 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 really it's for you to experiment and have fun and use this little ruler for more than just, you know, making a quilt, right? You got to find more uses for these rulers, rulers that we spend so much money on um, besides just, you know, for the one thing that we bought them for, which is like a Dresden layer cake sort of thing, right? So I've used a few things, uh, a Christmas quilt, baby quilts, flipped them, flopped them, made trees. I've, I've done lots of things. And this was another one of the ideas that I came up with. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope it gives you inspiration with your Dresden ruler, small one, big one, whatever. Even if it's just you have some beautiful fabric and you just want to make a nice big half circle of it, take the idea and run with it. Have as much fun as you possibly can with your stash. That's what fabric is in the collecting and a curator of fabric is all about is having fun with it for sure. So thank you everybody for spending your time with us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to check us out on Saturdays at 1 p.m. for our live streams and we'll be happy to see you there. All right. So happy Easter and happy sunshine bag making. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.